Okay, let's make a quick little tutorial on how to auto luminous. Yeah, basically you're going to go and load in auto luminous from here. This is where most, if not all, effects will be loaded. Some have like controllers and stuff, which you'll load here, which will be like the PMX file, which is like the same as what you would for a model. So first I'm gonna set up the scene by loading in a background. This is one that I just recently used, so we'll use this one. And as for a model, this was the last one that I'd use, so we'll use her too. The last thing that I'll load is an effect. Okay, so this is where you'll load um, like controllers for effects. So Kira Kira is a prime example of something that uses a controller. This is the same file format as a model, PMD or PMX. I want to say PMD is for models that are Mac, for like MMM. Let me go load now Kira Kira Pink. This X file, all X files for the most part will be loaded here. And now, hold up. Why is it not showing? Zero width? There we go. Sometimes if an effect won't show, it's because you need to go up here into accessory edit and make it the zero width so that it'll be like the first thing that shows up. Because like everything comes up in the order that you loaded it in. So like in this video, I loaded the stage and then the model and then Kira, which means that Kira would behind, be behind all of those other things. Let me go to the Kira controller and slow this down. I'm just going to register that, though I don't have to. Back to camera. Back to here. And then auto luminous and you're gonna notice once I load it that everything starts to glow Ta-da! isn't that pretty it's like little pink sparkly fireflies and even the model has has now started to glow if I press this to turn it off notice how everything stops glowing that's because they're auto luminous compatible but if you wanted something else to glow that isn't supposed to glow like say this let me just show you how to do that, but first let me get rid of some of these sparkles because that's a bit too many. Now let's say, for example, we wanted this to glow. We go up to MME, we go to the stage, which is this, we'd right click, subset extract, and then we'd look for whatever it is over here that is the pumpkin's faces, which I want to say is 13? No. And it's a bit of trial and error to figure out which stuff is where you want it to be for glowing or for the part that you want to mask off. Ah, number four. So now that we know that it's number four, we're going to come over here and then we're going to remove the effect. And wow, look at that. That's so bright. Way too bright, though. Let me see. Which one is the moon? Uh... Alright, so let's just say, for whatever reason, we wanted this brightness to stay the same, but we also wanted her hair to glow. For whatever reason, we wanted to do something really wild, like give her glowing hair. We would go to the, the auto luminous emitter. We would scroll down to our model, right click, subset extract, and then we would find whatever part of her ends up being her hair. I'm not sure which one that is, so I'm gonna go back to main and see by unchecking which ones are her hair. Just like what we did with the pumpkin. Whenever you load Raycast, you'll notice some things like the white of the eyes or the iris is like really dark. 
that's when we would want to remove it from the eyes. That way the eyes would end up glowing and be being like really bright so that way they would show up. Let me just find where her hair is at. Nope, that's her clothes. There we go, number 13 is her hair. I mean, that doesn't look great, but let's just pretend like for a moment this is something that we actually wanted to do. We're gonna hit apply, or okay, both of those are good options. And then we're gonna go back to the camera and back to accessory manipulation, and we're gonna turn down the brightness. Let's turn it down to like 0.3. As you can see, everything that this has been applied to gets lighter or brighter. So let me just turn that back to, say, one. I notice how her hair got brighter too. That's because everything is on that one emitter. So what we would want to do if we wanted, say, like her hair to be a lighter shade, we would load in another version of Auto Luminous and see how everything is stacked and it's now way brighter. What we would then do is lower this one to like 0.3 or something. We would go back to NME. And notice how we have two of them now. On this one, we have the pumpkin and we have her hair. So what we would do is remove her hair from this and then we would put it back on the second one. Remove effect, and voila! So now if we adjust the second one, we will only end up adjusting her hair, I think. Okay, well we didn't end up adjusting both of them at the same time, but there's a way around that. And that is to go back to this one and lower this as well. You would set this one then to all zeros. Actually, we wouldn't do that. We would only set that one to zero and then register. So that way, when we adjust this one, Okay, never mind. I clearly don't know what I'm talking about.
Okay, so what we do is we parent the autoluminous to the object that we want it to have affected. So on this one, we have the first one we have null zero, which is the stage. So whenever we adjust the stage's brightness, notice how her hair doesn't end up getting adjusted to be brighter or lighter or darker whenever we adjust this. That's because we have to tell it which one it's allowed to make bright brighter, because if we just leave it as ground, it's going to lighten everything in the entire scene. So we're going to register that, and then we're going to go back down to this one, and we're going to set it to Zatserine. So whenever we edit this, wrong one, whoops. Since this one is set to Zatserine, whenever we brighten or lighten this one, okay, never mind. So yeah, this is basically how you auto-luminous then.